Mike, it's Brett from Mind Body Martial Arts. Um, in case you don't know, I'm on a channel here on YouTube that focuses mainly on old style traditional martial arts and conditioning training. Um, thanks for all the people who like and sub to the channel and the Patreon guys who support the channel. So, okay. Um, yeah, I hope everyone's doing all right out there. So, um, I'm, I'm making this video for one of the guys on the Patreon um, who, who wanted uh, a, a, you know, some, you know, he's, he started into the martial arts, he's doing some of the conditioning stuff, and he wanted a bit of stuff um, to train and practice, so I'm going to try my best uh, to do a bit of a, um, a bit of a basic movements and strikes video um, without going too much onto tangents that I always do, yeah, so it's just going to be um, basic punches, basic strikes, uh, but probably because it's me, we're going to get um, uh, sort of sidetracked and diverted into particular types of movement and stuff like this and the way, the way that I like to set up movements and this and that. But, but that's all good. Um, so we'll, we'll get into that. And thanks a lot for the thumbs up there. I'll try and do it the best I can with the camera that I've got here and the setup. Uh, the, the, the ground and the footwork is actually very important. Um, but, um, but yeah, I'm struggling to get the camera to be able to see the ground. Um, so hopefully everyone can hear me and everything like that. And we will adjust between close here and back there to do different things, different things like this. So it's just no frills, no surprises, or there might be surprises. This is just going to be, uh, for the, uh, for the Patreon guys, probably be aired on here and then locked down to Patreon, um, so that this particular person can study. Uh, the, the, the difference the different things all right so I'm gonna skip um, I'm gonna skip uh, some strength and endurance training and stuff like that and we're just going to go straight into the movements as if you've already done a bit of your warm-up or whatever and then maybe we'll catch up on those things in a bit um, as usual if anyone wants to comment or whatever they can um, and, and I'll have a look I'll do a bit and then have a look um, and hopefully this will get to the Patreon uh, the guys on Patreon and they can they can give it a go yeah as best as they can and I'll try and pull stuff out of my mind that I want to get across and without going too crazy into the stances and stuff like that um, all right so okay um, let's start with punching okay there's there's loads of different ways of punching uh, Jesus it's so exhaustive but let's try and give a basic uh, thing that people can start with um, okay, obviously you clench your fist. Yeah, you clench your fist. There's lots of different ways to clench your fist, but we're just going to go with the straight up normal clench fist. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then, okay, we know what our fists are like when they're clenched, and we're going to loosen them now. And we're going to form a posture like this. Yeah, this is just like a loose, uh, you know, loose open hand. This is a sort of hand you'd use uh, for, for chop. Yeah, chopping and moving. Uh, and it means that. The mentality, you see already I'm going off, but the mentality of this, um, if, you, if, you, if you stay like this all the time, you're pretty much only going to throw punches, yeah? And what we want to do in a real situation is we want to be able to, we want to be able to grab, we want to be able to strike, uh, we want to have a mixture between grabbing and striking and pulling and twisting and grappling, and we, we don't need to just be stuck like this, yeah? So we don't need to just be head hunting and throwing things, yeah? So this is more like what we're going to start, yeah? So you can have your hands relaxed like this, yeah? Um, you can have them just like this cupped, and you can strike like this if the hands aren't uh, strong enough yet. Or you can have them sort of like this, in this kind of position, yeah? Uh, and this, in this position, you, you would strike, you also strike with this knuckle here, yeah? Obviously fingers for eyes, yeah? Knuckle fingers for eyes, and then the rest of it is gripping. And the reason we're holding it like this a bit, and so it's not tight and like super rigid, you know, it's, it's more like this. It's just so you don't break your thumb and you need some tension in your fingers because they can get caught, you don't want to break your fingers. So you don't want to have your hands completely like loose, yeah? yeah, yeah. You want to have a bit of tension in there, yeah? So like a swat, like you're going to swat something. Okay, that's, so that's a start off. Having said that, you don't have to always have that. So, ah, so on goes the story of ever-changing things in martial arts, okay? Um, but choose one of these for now. If you're starting, choose this kind of relaxed, like cup, cupping, yeah? 
or, or choose like this method like this yeah where the fingers are a bit more protected a bit more tight yeah and we're gonna this is what we're gonna start with our with our striking in okay so stance and position wise I'm, uh, you know I'm always going on about stances but you want to you want to form uh, I might pull the camera down a bit for this one um, all right, here we go. That's good. So you want to form, um, you want to form a position uh, like so, yeah. And then, and then you'll say your enemies on your left or on your right, whatever the opposite camera is, yeah. And it's like so off. And then what you want, little little trick here, is you want uh, a strong a strong position um, so that you can cross. You you can imagine that you can cross hands. Uh, and grab the opposite side of the opponent's body and pull them. Yeah, yeah, pull, 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 pull. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's that's kind of like a stability test. Now there are flat postures. Yeah, that we that you would do. Yeah, there are flat postures. But when you're forming the basic uh, fighting posture, this particular one, um, and everyone wonders like, oh, how do I test if it's stable? Well, like I said, imagine like you're gripping the opposite side of someone. This should help a lot of people. Imagine you're gripping the opposite side of someone's shoulder and you're pulling it, yeah? And that's a perfect test for if your, your hips are square in a power position. Grab, pull, yeah? So you imagine that you're pulling someone over and that's a good, if you're really like, maybe you've never done it before or it's really basic or you've never learned it, but that's a really good little secret to, to test is my stance, is my like front fighting stance, is it stable, is it good or not? Yeah, and usually what will happen is when you go to do the pull, yeah? When you go to do the pull, yeah, pardon me, you'll shift this right leg out, yeah? So, there we go. There's already something for you to practice in your uh, own time. Yeah, cheapo quality of my videos. So, there's already something to practice in your own time. Hopefully, you can give it a practice now whilst we're chatting. Yeah. So, side posture, hands like so. Yeah, so the fingers are somewhat protected. And then, imagine, imagine you're going to pull uh, someone over from the opposite shoulder. Not the same shoulder, the opposite shoulder. Yeah, nice. And then just do a few of those. Now you might have seen these look familiar, don't they? Because these are like the pulling, yeah? So do a few of those. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Yeah, just do some of those. Practice them in your own. Really imagine grabbing someone and pulling them. Now this is already before you've thrown a punch. This is a technique you can do, yeah? So someone's fighting you, boom, guards up, grab, hand, arm, opposite shoulder, head, hair, sleeve, pull, yeah? Uh, jacket here, pull, yeah? But what's it for? It's to test that your stance is solid at a basic level. Hands go up, body turns. Lots of people, when they first start out, they don't know how to check if this is powerful or not. Yeah, so usually they might be too flattened out or something like this. So again, like I say, a good way to check is can you reach the op, can you cross over to the imaginary side of someone's shoulder and pull them over? Yeah, can you imagine doing that on both sides? And like I said, usually one leg will creep out and that's, that's a nice powerful position to be in. Yeah, yeah that's that way your hips will be working nicely. Okay, so cool. Um, so, unfortunately, as is everything with me, even the beginning bits of stuff have points in them, yeah? So anyway, hands go up, go to the left side. This guard stays up. Do your little practice thing. Now, can I reach someone's opposite shoulder and pull? Yeah, yes I can. Yeah, nice. Can I reach and pull? Yeah, and when you pull, you're pulling upside down to this. Yeah, strong, boom, pull it like this. Yeah, then do a couple of those. So just do a couple of those and focus on it. Imagine grabbing someone's shoulder, 
pulling. Don't be rigid with it. All the, as you can see, and this is another thing which this is good for, all the work is in the body. Yeah, so imagine you're like grabbing a rope and pulling it, grabbing a rope and pulling it. Yeah, opposite sides. And that will test that your stance is strong. Yeah, so okay, so what have we done at the moment? We've got defensive hands that aren't gonna break or fingers gonna get nailed. Yeah, we've put them up, we've formed uh, a defensive posture. Now to make ourselves not have to think about it too much, because we've just started off. Oh, where does my foot go? Where, what do I do? Um, you imagine that you're grabbing the opposite side of someone's shoulder and you're pulling them down. Yeah, just pull. And this will set you, this will set you in a strong position. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Strong position. Okay, cool. So what have we got? We've got defensive hands. We know what posture to do. We're going to practice one. We've moved off into a strong position. We've tested that our position is strong by doing cross grips and pulls, which is an exercise. Yeah, we know that. Okay, now we're gonna now we're gonna throw. Oh, we've then done some practice pulls. Yeah, to just chest the antagonistic muscles of the punch. That's good. Yeah, this is just practice. Practice drill, practice drill, practice drill. And if you notice, even in my practice drill, I'm keeping one hand up. And then for you, um, keep focus on the front. Yeah, so, so look in a mirror or whatever, and obviously you're keeping focus on the front as if you're fighting someone. For me, unfortunately, I have to look at the camera, uh, which isn't great focus, but anyway, yeah. So that, now this is gonna set everything. Then of course, do it obviously opposite side as well. Hands come up. Uh, usually the moment you reach as if you're pretending to grab someone's opposite shoulder, um, you set this back leg correctly. So this is cool because for beginners, you don't have to worry about um, like your legs, your stance, because this, this mechanical exercise will sort out the stance for you. Uh, grabbing the opposite shoulder of your enemy and pulling it, because there's an exercise obviously to make your stance, to test that your stance is correct. Uh, and you can move in it and it's strong and you can utilize the twisting of your hips. Yeah, yeah. And then once you've got that, awesome. So you'll know now, and you'll know now that the stance isn't too flat. Yeah, because it's not too flat. It'll be perfect because you'll be like, oh, pull, yeah. I can feel that I'm strong. I can feel that I'm stable. And uh, give, it, give those things a practice. So this exercise will help you um, just with the antagonistic punching muscles anyway, but don't do it. Don't go crazy with it, yeah? And it'll help you with the leg stability, it'll help you with the twisting of the body, which you're gonna use when you do the next thing, which is our punch. All right, okay, so going into the punch, again, it's up to you to keep practicing this punch uh, as much as you want to, and putting more effort into it, whatever. Okay, so hands go up again, as you can see, Fingers are like this. We go here, we test our stance by doing a mock reach for the opposite shoulder of the opponent. Yeah, and that's gonna square off our hips and we're gonna learn that they're strong. It's also gonna teach us that we can, we can lean forward and lean back. We're not planted. Yeah, we know our center of balance is here, but we can lean, yeah? And this is our full range of motion. We can use that on this side. Yeah, so we're learning those things. Okay, now from those that position, the guard's still up, the hands are tight. We're gonna we're gonna just throw our first punch, which is easy. We're gonna just throw a jab. Yeah, so not nicely now our hips are set and we're strong. We know that if someone comes at us, we can actually wrestle them. We can pull them down. We can grapple. We can move. So we're not set in too um, too strong a stance. Yeah, but if you guys remember anything, um, it's that this little silly opposite gripping method yeah and it's actually a it's actually a good technique but just remember that you it's just a cool way to set your your legs and your stance and your body and keep it uh, moving in like a 3d plane not you know not everything back forward left and right yeah back forward left right you know so you remember that you can pivot to yeah and it's engaging these muscles so great okay anyway let's go into the punch so we square off, the hands come up into this defensive position. Not too, uh, these are strikes, they can be. 
um, but you have to train them the same with this. Not too strong, not too weak. And we've said that this, uh, these things, once they're trained, will go for eyes, will go for whatever, but it's a nice relaxed way to be, which isn't this. It's not quite this, where you might get broken fingers and shit. So it's in like a gripping posture, yeah? Yeah, and then we're gonna turn off to the left and then you do it, do it to the right for your practice, yeah? And then you're gonna practice grabbing the opposite side of someone's shoulder and pulling it, yeah? And you put whatever effort you wanna do into that. And that sets, you give it a try, that will set you. You might be slightly flat, and then you'll do that and your back leg will creep round. Yeah, you see that? The moment I'm like, ooh, I think I'm powerful. And then the moment I do that, my back leg creeps around, yeah? And then that's, because it's the opposite of that power that you're gonna be doing like an antagonistic, like reverse punch, yeah, with, yeah? So cool. So for the guy, boom, we've set off, yeah? So we're gonna throw, so from there, neutral, yeah? So from here, you take your hands out in front of you, you should see that's neutral. From here, we're gonna unwind, and that's gonna be our jab, yeah? I'll do it at the camera. So there's, here's you, enemy. Uh, I step this way, I practice my grip, I practice my grip. Yep, cool, I know I can pull this guy over, I know I'm solid base. Here, yeah, boom, that would be the strike, yeah, boom, yeah? And well, because this is basics, we're just practicing nice, full range of motion, yeah? You can have a makiwara, you can have something to hit. Um, on a boxing bag, this kind of a hit will just get absorbed in, but on something semi-flexible, you'll learn your feedback. You can even press it against the wall. Yeah, you press it and you'll, you'll get feedback on how it works, but don't worry about that. Just practice full range of motion, boom. That's your jab, here, boom. And can you see I'm still unwinding from neutral, boom. Yeah, and my guard's up with these silly hands that I'm doing. Yeah, boom. Yeah, so that would be your first. And then we've been practicing this grip and pull because now we're gonna do the opposite of that. Yeah, which is blade off, drive. Hand is slightly, you can do it like this if you want. The hand is actually slightly off kilter. Yeah, for this, for these strikes. Uh, contrary to a lot of popular Western belief. Boom, yeah. So, blah, blah, blah. Full range of motion. This is where this one comes in. Yeah, boom, yeah. That's coming exactly with the opposite of this. It's coming here. Yeah, and you can see, like I'm not, I'm not putting a heavy amount of effort into this. Yeah, it's the body, like otherwise I'd be here going like, <coughs> and I'd be locking, that's a one way of punching, but I'd be locking and containing all my kinetic energy, a lot of my power. And there's lots of different trains of thought about how to punch. We're gonna keep it kind of relaxed and we're gonna let the legs do the work because the legs were doing the work with this exercise that we were doing, which is imagining that you're pulling your opponent's opposite shoulder towards you. So we didn't do the opposite of that, yeah? Square off, range of motion. When you're practicing basics and you're practicing in the air, my opinion, range of motion and just slowly working at it is much better than trying to just like, you know, imagine that you're a boxer, but you've got no formulation to what you're doing. Nothing wrong with being a boxer, um, but you've got to learn the basics first. You know, your, your, your sort of uppercut would be something like this, you know, and then you, and then you change it into something that you put your body into, yeah? So just relax with it. Don't, don't try and be too crazy at first. You can be crazy later on. But yeah, just practice the mechanics. That's what I do a lot on this channel. It doesn't make you Bruce Lee, but yeah. Safety, hands so no fingers get broken. You can grip, you can strike horrible strikes, yeah? Off, straight, yeah, boom, straight, down the line, straight, straight, yeah, then, yeah, other one. So one, two, yeah, and you can see how 
yeah? How I'm, how I'm moving, and you can see how it's with the body. Yeah, if I, if I show the feet, I'll show the feet. So yeah, just nothing crazy. But if I show the feet, yeah, boom, yeah, there, there, yeah, yep. Can you see how it's the feet doing, the hips and feet? But can you see how important, I mean, I wonder how many martial arts out there have even tried that exercise of trying to imagine that they're pulling someone over towards them, yeah? But that's exactly what you need. And it changes if you're flat in line, yeah? It changes everything. That's a different posture, but give it a try. It's more like a wrestling posture for those of you who've done like BJJ and wrestling and stuff like that. I've done those things. Um, it's a good posture. Anyway, I'll look at the comments in a second. Uh, hold on, put this down. And look, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to insult anyone's intelligence or martial arts ability here. Um, these are just basics of a particular system. So straight out, straight down the line, range of motion, uh, fists slightly off kilter, yeah? So we all, <laughs> We all learned these like years ago. And once your range of motion really goes out, yeah, you can do such a thing. But um, they always used to say, famous Okinawan uh, masters, this for training, this for real life, yeah? So if you guys don't know that one, keep it, practice it. Because what it does is it keeps, it keeps the, see the shoulder, it keeps it under, yeah? Boom, which is a real old style. <laughs> of hitting, yeah? And then like you say, you can add little evil things on the end, yeah? Okay, but anyway, back to basics. Hands like this, you can have them like this if you want, just relaxed. But um, if you keep them like this, you're not gonna be able to do the next bit, which is you need to be able to, um, because traditional karate and traditional martial arts is a mixture of grappling and striking and hitting and stuff. Um, it's a lot different to like modern boxing, you know? Um, so for instance, like with, even with maybe the fight starts, I know we're just doing a basic, and you go pull into your defensive posture, you know, obviously I'm using this direction so you can see, but if you were the enemy, it's like to pull up here, yeah, her hands are here, so pull, pull, yeah, shield, yeah, then pull, jab, one jab there, um, other hand comes off kilter, obviously it's a bit real basic, yeah, but it wouldn't even, you don't even necessarily have to hit the first time. You could do um, a training exercise, but in real life, you could just move off, grab the guy's opposite shoulder, head, jacket, pull, down, boom, yeah, already. Or the other one, hit, punch comes in, boom, you've moved, you, you, you've moved, boom, shit, boom, little bop on the nose, grab the freaking head, uh, jacket, collar, opposite sleeve, pull down, um, might just pull him towards you, hit, yeah, pull him towards you, hit, hit, hit into a knee, you know, you might just go like this and pull the guy over onto the floor and just kind of walk, walk around and be like, ooh, what other friends have we got in the way? So this is where like real simple, easy basics can be so useful if you're not stuck in this mentality, this like, yeah, 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 you know, you can train like that, it's fine. You're not stuck in that mentality, yeah? And then again, um, you know, you could be here with this basic movement, whoa, come to here, boom, yeah? Stack that jab, you wanna make it more deadly, that jab straight down the line turns into, you know, turns into this, which is for the throat, for the, 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 the nose, the eye bridges, uh, causes a lot of pain, yeah? So that jab, in this case, you wanna take it to a more dangerous, uh, that jab is a straight down the line, boom, unwinding, but it's this, this strike, yeah, like that, yeah? And then the opposite punch, well, you could pull them down, but the opposite punch, if you're gonna do it with the training exercise, is the same, you unwind, boom, yeah? yeah? And another thing as well, you gotta remember, this initial strike could miss, could be blocked, turns into a grab, but you just throw the hit in, yeah? Even, 
Even if someone's like a good boxer, whatever, you're like, shit, you're getting beaten, bah, yeah? And you grab the, the, the arm, the hand, like this, and you just go whack, whack, <coughs> you know? Or you can grab it, pull them into your kick, yeah? Throw another kick at them or something, but anyway, so we've got all of that from the simple, silly, basic exercise, which is just a jab and a counter punch, yeah? Yeah, so, so sorry, as, as usual with me, I trail off um, onto crap that I shouldn't do, but yeah. So we'll recover the points again. I'll just have a look at the uh, comments, see if there's anything good. Oh no, what have I done? Ah, uh, someone says, hi bro. Linguish says, iron hand workout. Beast of Grim Executioner says, hey, what's up, Brett, hello. Beast of Grim Executioner, pull and bang, yeah, yeah. So just remember that um, uh, you, you've got, <laughs> we all, we're all good, thank you. So just remember, don't, because um, this, this is a beginning, like intro, whatever, for one of the guys on Patreon, um, but there's nothing to say that when you first learn something, uh, you have to be like bound by it. So just the main thing I'd say is always remember that this is this, is this, is this, is this, is this, is this, is it's, it's, it's you, it's, it's everything. So don't, don't just get into this mindset. And that's why specifically in our defense here, we've, well, it's, this is a basic training exercise more, but it's, it's cool that you can use this basic training exercise. It's only a cross, it's only a jab and a cross, but it's cool that you can use it um, you know, in, in an actual defensive way if you needed to, because what the hell's the point of training it otherwise, yeah? Okay, so, so yeah, that's why we have our hands like this. And yeah, okay, look, I've skipped the conditioning side of things, but, you know, if you want to commit to these kind of hand movements or whatever, uh, you, you're going to have to condition them a little bit, otherwise they're not going to be, like, strong. Uh, the reason we have our hands like this is because this uh, is a is a strike yeah these fingers are like a grip but it's not rigid it's not like it's not quite like dragon form like you know rigid and you know we're, we're halfway in between so we can we can pat things we can feel stuff you know we can turn them into fists you know you can turn them into any kind of thing you want gouge people grip people you grapple them yeah that's the idea with the hands like this here yeah, grim the executioner says low limits excellent so, so here we go. So, as I said again, grips are like this. Uh, if you want to train this one, uh, Boshiken or Boshiken, yeah, Kokushiken, you just do it on the floor, yeah. Like do 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 fingertip push-ups, but but uh, put this uh, thumb in and then do it on the second knuckle, and becomes very powerful, yeah. Yeah, it becomes very strong for like hitting points. So anyway, hands like this. This is the defensive side. Remember to do it on the right as well. Boom, here, yeah. Then practice your opposite pulls. Can I, ask yourself the question, when I'm in my front, whatever you want to call it, defensive stance, could I grab the opposite side of someone's shoulder? This is the main like message I want to get across for, for, for my system or style or whatever. Can I grab the person's opposite shoulder and pull? with stability and force and power, yeah? And can I do it on both sides, yeah? So when you're pulling, you can pull the hand like this. It's up to you upside down, I don't care how you pull. But that's the test, can I reach? Can I even overreach and grab and pull the person, yeah? If you can, then I suggest to you that you're, you're gonna be engaging and using your hips and your core nicely. And, and, then, and then you practice the little exercise I gave at the beginning, um, which is blading off, uh, and your feet, let your feet naturally adjust as you reach, by the way. Don't stay locked and relax. Because when you, when you do your back hand, it'll naturally swing your right, uh, your opposite foot out of it. Yeah, so if you see me here, when you go like this, see the back foot naturally swings out, into what we would call like mabu or a little bit of a wider hip. Basically, uh, 
hips, shoulder width apart, or feet, shoulder width apart. Yeah, it'll just stop you getting it wrong. Bang, can I grip? Yeah, and it's also quite good because, um, because as a defensive posture, oh shit, yeah, hand comes up. This will do it too, yeah? Yeah, this will do it too. And it's also a nice distraction. Oh shit, someone's hitting me. Well, this will do it too. And then, see how the hip pulls forward? Yeah, bop, 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 kick. Yeah, and then the, the chambering of the hip is masked by the hand. Yeah, that's called, um, uh, what's it called? It's called, they call it in some styles, they call it funo kata, like void, because you're, you're, you're and it's, it's not like bullshit, it's just a real thing, you're just, you're just, because if I'm fighting you like this, boom, 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 yeah, boom, boom, and I do this, <laughs> what are you going to do? You're going to go, oh, shit, <laughs> he's going to kick me, <laughs> you know, uh, okay, fangs are good because you can hit again and they work in real life, but if I'm fighting you, bam, bam, and I go like that, you're going to be like, oh, shit, up, something's coming from my head, or whatever, or, or you'll be too far away, but that's the idea, boom, it comes up, look how the hips chambered, then bah, in comes that hip, yeah, just easy start, boom, yeah, and it's just not, nothing magic, it's like what I've used to like stomp a door through or something like that, just boom, yeah, and you'll be surprised how uh, powerful just that relaxed motion is, yeah, yeah, okay, uh, so also do your training like in front of a, don't do it too much in front of a mirror, but you need to take note of your your like body, your body mechanics, your alignment. Uh, that's why we do like the things like the Qigong and the stretches and the sort of yogic style movements. It's, t it's really more to teach your body like, I know I'm in line. So when I do this, I know that my hip, my shoulder, my body are lined up. So if I wanna hit on a flat plane, I've got my skeletal power, yeah? which is another way of hitting, yeah? And then if I want to hit off the flat plane, uh, you know, I've got this kind of power here that requires some engagement, cool. But I'm sorry, I've trailed off again. So anyway, this is important. Now, another, another thing for the guys who follow the channel, part of the power of this kind of a posture is that obviously this, these are trained, knuckles are trained, fingers are trained, um, and there's no shortcuts for that, yeah? It, it, you can put your fingers like this, but this looks strange, yeah? But you can if you want, yeah? And then again, you, you practice this strike. It's a powerful strike. Um, I've got a little boxing bag here. And yeah, this, this strike goes in. Ooh. Keep that awareness about you, yeah, see? This strike, like so. Oh, you can't really see it, but anyway. It goes in and it presses. Yeah, it's a fast strike. It goes for soft points, sternum. Yeah, but it does require some training. Eyes require some training. Uh, hold on, that's gonna fall over again. I'll get out of it. Yeah, all right. So anyway, here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Where was I? So this, these need to be trained, but also. So the forearms, yeah, this is the old weapon of karate, yeah, or kung fu or whatever you want to call it. So these forearm bones, they play later on, I mean, this is just the very basic, but they play part of this defensive posture too, or this basic, yeah, because really, um, as well as just jabbing someone, um, you can obviously shunt them with the bone, leave it there, yeah, move it, and you don't have to move uh, linear, obviously you can move in all kinds of angles, but you can shunt them with the bone of the arm before the elbow. So like if you mock, you guys are in front of me, maybe throw a punch, maybe I'll chop it, maybe I'll shunt forward. I'm not really aiming for anything, I'm just shunting it, I've used it before. And it's like just like hitting someone with a stick. Yeah, it's, it's kind of just like this. It's like I'm just here and I'm going boom. And it just messes people up. Sometimes it hits them, sometimes it pisses them around, and then also you can chop with it, yes? So you can, you know, you can, because you'll be getting hit, you can throw one of those horrible hits out, throw another one, chop with the palm, whether you've actually gripped something, and you just give it a few chops. 
I've given someone a few chops in the neck with this before. It'll knock, pretty much knock them out and stuns them. Yeah, I've hit a motorbike helmet with it before a couple of times. Also stunned the person wearing the motorbike helmet because it's like rattling your head. And it's just like a distraction, yeah? Yeah, so, yeah, okay. Um, so this needs to be trained too, but that's not, sorry, that's not in this video, all right? Keep, this is meant to be a basic video, but the idea is here's a piece of wood, yeah? Yeah. Obviously it's not how you train it. Well, actually it is, but you can hear just the general sort of conditionness. Yeah, so you don't have to have, I'm not that great at it, um, but just get it to, get it to an all right level. Yeah, or you only have to tap them on their own bones and you'll be fine, all right? So, oh, put dust on the floor. All right, so, so, the, so then, you know, now you might be thinking, okay, well, I respect this kind of a guard. This is a, this is a tough guard. We know this is a tough guard. Um, you know, this guard's similar, a bit, a bit less, um, uh, because, uh, you know, the bones are sort of a bit sideways. But I can respect it now because uh, I see what it's for. You know, I've got, I've got palms. I've got, um, uh, of course, we haven't even talked about. Uh, like chopping instead of uh, instead of punching, but basic basic we here move to the side jab yeah Sorry. I should have gone it's just kept onto this basic jab that's all I've learning I apologise to the Patreon guy who this was meant to be just a basic one for I've hit with about a million different variations but that's just me so yeah main point unwind range of motion yeah you practice it. Um, the legs are important, then, then be sure that after you deliver your punch, it's powerful enough or you're stable enough that you could pull someone over, yeah? Because that's what you might be doing, yeah? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. But if you, if you practice that, it looks stupid. But if you do practice that, then you, you'll, you'll probably do it and you'll surprise yourself. Because you'll throw one punch to someone, might just be a jab, they might miss it, might block, and you'll grab them and pull them. And then you'll probably, first time, you'll probably shock yourself and fall over. But you would have pulled them, yeah, you get used to it. Give it a practice in training, see what it does. It'll mess up your sparring partner. It's not really for sparring, but you give it a try, see, see what you think. You'll get away with it a couple of times. But in a real confrontation, that one move will, might be so, like, out there that, you know, as with old karate cutters and stuff like this, and kung fu cutters, you might just pull it off, pull them over, whatever, pull their arm, pull their jacket, opposite sleeve, opposite shoulders work well. Hell, you might just pull and just get a bunch, handful of clothing that you can then throw back at them and then just boot them in the body. Whatever it is, we'll follow it up with an elbow. Up to you. But anyway, there, there. So practice that one, yeah, hit like this, yeah, and then two, hit like this. And practice the opposite pull, yeah. Make sure you're doing it with the legs, yeah, that's where you're going to get the benefits. Opposite, opposite. Yeah, and that's that's it really. So there, straight. This is slightly off kilter, and then this one comes. Boom. Yeah, same. And yeah, just practice that. And it's just, and then it's just the movement of the body. To so do a couple of those, yeah, and just concentrating on your. Um, uh, alignment, so I look I'm nice and flat here, I'm reaching, and then this one, boom, I'm coming. And if you've noticed, my hands aren't actually coming back to here like this. This is um, a contentious issue. My hands are sort of here, here. They're trying to stay in guard. Similar, I suppose, to like Kyokushin. So it's kind of like the benefits of this counter force, but I'm not doing this, which is just, you know, it's just, it's gonna get you nailed, isn't it? It's awesome, it's got its merits, but it's gonna get you nailed. All right, so here, here, whatever, here. But the main thing is that, just just do it slow. One, two, hopefully this has helped, one. And I'm not Captain Punch. And you can see, um, I do strange things like, you know, uh, this. It's like, what the hell's going on here? 
you know, because everyone's taught like, oh, you, you go like this, this is how you punch. Um, but if you punch and you leave your thing out there for a second, yeah, especially when you're following up with something else, again, this can be a grab, a shield. In that second, it can be a parry. Yeah, it can, it can gain you a few seconds. It's like a little feeler. Um, the, only, the only time it might be bad is if there's like a knife attack. But look, we're just doing a basic, basic here. So, you know, like you can't account for everything. Um, but, but yeah, you, this you see in Kung Fu, uh, like Ma Bu, you know, this is like basic posture, freaking one, 101. Um, and it's funny that you find it cropping up in this exercise that looks a bit more, um, it looks a bit more, uh, so that, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's funny because you train it like this and no one's like, this isn't even real, it doesn't work, but you add it to a jab and look, there it is, yeah. And it's there, relaxed, the lines are good, yeah. You can move still. Yeah, so so don't don't poo poo some of these old things. Um, you don't have to have quite such a low stance, but it's actually no, it doesn't feel low for me. It's just a good wrestling stance. It's a good fighting stance. It was good, and when I used it in BJJ, it was good for people trying to take you down. Yeah, but there we go. Yeah, so boom. That's what's that? It's just. Old fashioned Mabu from Kung Fu, yeah. Here, yeah, boom. Yeah, straighten out. Because you're you're sort of intermediate when you do this. You straighten out to get that distance and get the skeletal power. Yeah, and then you can do that little grab again. You're pulling this hand here. Yeah. Yeah, down, boom. You leave it out. Boom. Yeah, it's a shield, it's a it's it's a something, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, all right. I'll have a look at some of the comments. Thanks for the thumbs up and stuff. Uh, oh, let me see. Thanks for the guys who support the Patreon channel, by the way, as well. Uh, and people who like and sub and watch, it's awesome. Beast the Grim Executioner says, Master Strike with the Strike. Very sneaky. Yep. Oh, damn it. What am I doing? Uh, a street fight depends um, a lot on what the opponent is wearing when they're applying grabbing body shots. Yep. Beast the Grim Executioner, Arm and Shins. Uh, Wu Bear 260 says, The old ways hold the answers. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just common. It's like common sense training. Yeah. So, but, so look, in essence, all we've, all we've done today, oh, thanks for the thumbs up, by the way. All we've done today is we've literally just done, we've just, just done uh, uh, a jab, you know, and a cross. That's all we've done, yeah? We've just done a jab and a cross. And if that's all you want to train it as, that's great. Yeah, just jab, just some jab, cross, jab, cross. Don't overthink it, jab, cross. But if you take the time to think, you know, when, this is for beginner, but if you take the time to go, okay, um, let's, let's have a go. All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm not boxing. So my immediate reaction doesn't have to be this. Yeah. This psychologically, this stops me from grappling. It stops me from gripping. If, if, if when you get attacked, your immediate reaction is this, it, it might, it, it might, it's a good reaction if these are your tools. Yeah. And you know, you see it in MMA. But we, you, as you've learned from m &A, and everyone's learned, you need more than just this. Yeah, you need grapple, grip, pull, uh, you know, knee, arm, elbow, clinch. Yeah, you need to be fluid, you need to be a bit more relaxed with it. So that's why it's like, okay, my immediate reaction is, um, you know, although this is a training exercise, left, right, left, right. Although this is a training exercise, my immediate reaction is, boom, defensive posture and you can look where I am but you know look my elbow is like here my hand is here and the I'm literally hiding behind my body here yeah in this and then we're practicing our little grip to make sure we've got good stability yeah yeah okay I'll adjust my feet a bit 
Yep, I'm keeping, look, I'm keeping the hand up because I'm, I want this, <laughs> I want this uh, shield, yeah, for want of a better word, yeah. Um, so I'm keeping that up and then, oh yeah, okay. So now with this here, it's not here or working here, but it's the same, you know, it's, it's the same idea. You can, uh, you might want to distract, but you can still throw hooks, yeah. So you can go, bah, bah, hook, uppercut. Um, but it doesn't even have to be stuff like that. It can be straight down the line with one of these horrible shots. Yeah, that turns into a grip. That turns into just a flailing limb, um, which, which is, um, uh, well, I, I practice uh, not just obviously the normal hits, but also just, uh, you know, into like, the, into like the iron palm bags and the bean bags and the sand bags and stuff like that, the rock bags. You know, hits that are that are they're, they're they're not necessarily engaged with the alignment of the body, which is the best way. But there's also times when you just throw. You see it. You see it in MMA, where you know you'll see the guys that are fighting. They sort of get one of them, and they're just like throwing those hits in there. Yeah, but uh, it might seem strange, but you got to practice every kind of hit that you can, um, which is why I've never really made, I try and make videos on how to punch. Well, one, I don't want to insult people. Two, there's so many different ways of punching that we should or can benefit from practicing, yeah? There's, you know, there's, there's the traditional, uh, you know, like just straight like this, for training, getting the body alignment right. Um, there's the uh, side punching, yeah, same like so. Yeah, this is all old stuff you guys remember. You can do these all day, yeah, but, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, there's, there's boxing style, you know, jab, jab, hit. Um, I, I also like hitting, um, practicing hitting on angles as well. So, um, you know, like, cause, cause, you know, like, there isn't just, you guys probably get me, and I, a lot of people think uppercut, and they're like, oh yeah, uppercut, up, hook, round. <laughs> You know, um, you know, straight punch, straight whatever. You know, jab like body shots, but every conceivable angle you can you can strike. Yeah, for instance, in bare knuckle fighting, you see a lot of this, um, where where someone's throwing a hand uh, with the two knuckles over someone's guard. Yeah, it's like such a hit like this, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, to come in over, hit the temple, knock them out. Um, also, you know. Upward shots like this to the face that are going, uh, if you draw a cross in the face, if you imagine a cross, you're hitting at angles as well, you know, to put, to put more spin on the head, not just up, but up and an angle, you know, like boom, yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's just, that's just stuff for you to practice, I don't know. Um, it's hard enough to actually just li literally hit someone for real, so that's why, you know, whatever. And then you try and break it down into these, like, angles of hitting, yeah, but anyway. So, again, bar, jab, body, along, legs, jab, cross, yeah, jab, cross, yeah, grab, pull, make sure you're keeping it square, and do it the other side, jab, cross, yeah, jab, cross, yeah, yeah, keep the hands about here, and just practice it yourself, don't, don't do what I'm doing, focus on what you're doing, don't focus on the screen, because I have to talk, yeah, Jab, cross, jab, cross. And as you can probably see, I'm not putting a lot of effort with my arms. It's mainly the legs and body twisting that are doing it, yeah? And the alignment of the skeleton. Yeah, and then, if you want to, you can then put, you know, extra force into it, yeah? But it should be force with movement, yeah? Unless you don't have space to move, and all you'll be able to do is hit on the spot. So you should practice that as well, yeah? But, but nice, if you're gonna be practicing in air, like I said, guards up, straight, straight, yeah? Straight, straight, yeah? Just check that you can do the opposite pulls, that you're set correctly, boom, boom, yeah? And don't try and put too much effort into it until you've got it down, understood, and you're like, oh yeah, it's a simple thing, it's not rocket science. Um, then once you've, once you've got it down pat, oh yeah, yeah, jab, cross, then you can add like a little, sh 
shunt with your jab where your whole body moves a little shunt to make up the space. Yeah? So there I'm going to jab. So I jab, I jab with a step, yeah, yeah, like a, like a stab with a sword, yeah, that's why my body is straight. I jab like this or this or whatever hit you want to do, yeah, then the body will turn a bit as you throw this counter punch, boom, yeah, or whether it's the body, whatever, yeah, yeah, but allow your feet to move, yeah not be stuck on the floor. All right. Let's have a look at some of the comments. Thanks for all the thumbs up, by the way, guys. Um, let's have a look at the comments. Well, I hope this helps the, the Patreon guys who I've posted it for. Um, I'm cognizant that all we've really covered is basically a jab and a cross. Um, but there's a, bit of, there's a lot of bit of stuff in the middle there about body positioning a strong positioning movement, blah, blah, blah. All the sorts of crap that you usually tinker with at traditional arts. Will it make you Bruce Lee? No. Will it, um, is it any better than going to a, a martial art, like a club or a MMA club and just having, just doing jabs and crosses and stuff like that on a pad and having an opponent attack you? Well, no, I can't say it's better than that, but it's an extra something for you to do. Um, and, and also, if you can't, do that and you don't have someone in the uh, with you it's a good way to keep yourself sharp um, and just go through your movements you can practice it on a boxing bag and let it get a bit sloppy but just practice it like that get get used to it let's see um uh beast the grim executioner says only a fool would poo poo something without trying it to understand it first everything got both right and wrong answers depends if you're willing to find it out yeah yeah yeah, that's, that's true, they agree, um, Beast, the Grim Executioner. Uh, still, <laughs> Bushy KK says, still grinding props. Oh yeah, 52 minutes later. So I mean, I guess that's, that's like, I suppose the silly, I'm leaning because of the light. I suppose that's the silly essence of like traditional martial arts is, I don't know, maybe you over explore uh, certain topics, maybe you over train certain things that, that um, you know, someone who does MMA or whatever, they'll train it nicely, they'll train it heavily, they'll move on, they'll train it again, drill, drill. Um, which is kind of what we're doing here. We're just drilling this simple action, yeah? And there's no harm in that, yeah? There's no harm in having a bit of a mind, and there's also no harm in getting out of, uh, like, the sport mindset, yeah? And that's why we're drilling it with these open hands. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Um, Joe, Jobo, is it? Jibo1983 says basics everything. Yeah, that's why we're from, that's why from the essence, like I could have stood here and gone, yeah, okay, we're gonna do jab, cross, jab, cross, jab, cross, jab, oh yeah, excellent. Jab, cross, jab, cross. Remember to test your hips, jab, cross. But that's completely different to standing here and going, okay, this is what we're gonna do, guys. Hands, okay, our hands are gonna be like this. Yeah, not too tight, not too loose. The reason they're like this is because we don't want to bust our fingers, but we want to be able to grip. Also, we've got a nice weapon on the end of the thumb here that needs training, but it's tra very easy to train it nice and strong. You just do press up on it. It hurts like hell at first, but it's a powerful one, yeah, for, uh, for hitting all sorts of nasty places, yeah? Um, you've got to be careful, though, because you can break your thumb easy, yeah? But, but anyway... So that aside, we've got palms, we've got hands, fingers are crooked in, in Kung Fu or whatever, you train the tips of your fingers as well. So you'd, you know, quite as easily, if someone's coming to hit you, it's like, oh shit, they've come to hit me, or forward. So there, there again, this, this kind of a defensive posture has, um, has many attitudes. It has like, oh shit, the capture attitude of, I didn't realize what was coming, um, you know. Yeah, I didn't realize what was coming. Oh, uh, we'll, yeah, into the neck. Yeah, or just, <laughs> yeah, oh, oh shit. <laughs> As the uppercut goes in, I dropped. Yeah, if you saw what I did with my hand there. So I went, oh shit, boom. Obviously this is parrying or trapping. Boom, that's, that's a nice one. Yeah, and it, do, it doesn't even have to be with the full body. You just go like that and give someone a tap there. Then you get them, yeah, a couple of hits. 
That was just a tap under the chin. Quick one, it'll only, it'll only just do that. Just shock him for a second, boom. Flat palm comes, splats into the face. Or it can just be a punch. Yeah, but, but that's very quick. Yeah, and then, oh, step back. Yeah, and whatever. But anyway, where was I going? Ah, so anyway, hands, that's what they're for. Versatile, yeah. We're, we're not just like this, yeah. No problem with being just like this. But I'm not Rocky Balboa, I'm not the best boxer in the world. So if I just stand here like this boxing, um, I'm, I'm losing some of my tools, yeah? M more likely someone comes at me boxing, whatever, I'll be like, oh shit, um, and I'll just I'll just grab something. Grab the side of the head, grab their wrist. Even if it's from here, the, even if it's just from here from the jab, boom, grab opposite side of the body and they're just like, oh, what the fuck? This guy's got me by here. They'll probably just pull away quick, but it's up to you to react. But also if they pull away quick, you just throw in that kick there. Yeah, it's for the lower, lower body and stomach. It's just a stomp, yeah? Comes up like this and it goes out. Usually, like I said, with this hand, boom, that conceals it, it's like a piston. Yeah, boom, yeah, there it goes, boom. Yeah, and it's, it's a nasty hit. Always gets you like this. And usually, what do we say with kicks? You try not to let them fall like this because it like kills the force. But with this kick, that's actually quite a good thing because when it falls, which it naturally does, it usually catches someone. If you aim it for like the chest, it usually catches them here, here, or as it's falling, you can even catch them in the groin or whatever. And it's, or you hit them there and they just crumple. Um, or, or, or like I've done it once is I actually kicked someone in the thigh and it made them like, <laughs> it made, they were running towards me going like, just screaming like, Wah! and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> so I just stood there and went, <laughs> oh, bang, <laughs> as they ran <laughs> and they just went, oh, <laughs> and they did like a little 360 and ended up on the floor. And I was, I was just a bit like, oh, shit, what was, what was this guy doing? It was a bit mean, but well, it wasn't then don't. I mean, I'm no street brawler, but don't run towards someone screaming and like, like, I don't know, like you're some madman or something. Usually I'm very placid, but you get a sense, anyway, too much. Anyway, so yeah. So that's why from the get go, we're going, okay, hands. This is what the hands are for. Um, the attitude of the hands is, I suppose, similar to boxing, is that we're using them as shields and we're hiding behind them, yeah? Now, don't forget though, they can grip, they can pull, yeah, so they can do this, yeah, they can obviously do all this stuff, yeah, they can hit, yeah, and, and it's easy, yeah, it's not, you, um, everyone, uh, thanks for anyone still listening, but everyone's thinking of this like knockout blow, yeah, I like, I suppose you see it in MMA, knockout blows are great, but in, you know, in real life, you've kind of got to battle someone, you've got to, you gotta actually fight them. And it, it's not, it, everyone thinks it's maybe like sparring or something, it's like bang, bang, you know, knock out, blow, a few jabs, and that's not the way it is. It's like gripping, grappling, pushing, you fall over. So if you, if you get the idea into your head that you can, um, you can do little, little things to people, and that's why we keep our hands open. You know, like someone hits you, it's like, ooh, like how many self-defense things do you see where they like move? I don't know, I can't even move like how they move, but they do like a block. Like, sorry, Jake Mace, but like Jake Mace style, where they do like a block, and then they do like a big punch, and they do like a kick, and they're like, yes, yeah, self-defense. Whereas really, it's like, oh shit, someone's hitting for you here, move out the way, keep your hand there, so that they've got something mental to stick onto. You know, like as if they've hit you because things happen fast, ooh, your hand's there. Then you just bop them in the face, like Baz Rutten style. You know, so they, they've gone to hit you and your defense is just, <laughs> your defense has just been that. Like, you know, oh shit, bang, yeah? Then you grab, boom, then this hit comes in, yeah? Oh shit, boom, boom. knee, headbutt. You know, and then, oh shit, break away, what's going on? Don't, uh, don't look too good. Don't look too martial artsy. Uh, like, conceal your martial art. Because on camera, if um, if you're on camera and someone's like trying to fight you, and you're like, yeah, wow, yeah, wow, <laughs> <"Wah." laughs> you know, if you're Van Damming, them, yeah, yeah. you know, I tell you what, they're gonna watch that footage, and uh, 
you're going to get crucified. It might be justified, but this is why the real uh, self-defense is, uh, you know, it's twists, turns, short movements. It's using everything you've got, shunting. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just kind of everything. Um, yeah, so for anyone who's, mind you, people like that, and that's how we all learn with these big movements, yeah, you know, but then it's, it's got to, you've got to put it to bed, yeah, uh, but maintain the, the, the benefits of the, the traditional martial art, which are the stances, the power, the structure, yeah, because you might be doing this, small movement, like a guard and a strike, but the, the structure, the structure's there, yeah, so I'm, the, the, the the, the alignment is there, yeah, with these things. Yeah, alignment is always there. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just bouncing around like a monkey now. <sighs> I'm still annoyed that all we covered was uh, just literally like this guard and doing a left and a right. Um, but in, in summary, uh, again, I think that's really important exercise for anyone to give a try. Um, because the amount of martial artists uh, who I've encountered over the years and come up to me, and you know, it's that front stance, especially beginners, beginners, that front stance, and they're like, how do I know my front stance is right? Um, and then, you know, that's grade, that's grade A, excellent tool. Um, imagine you're cross-grabbing someone. So I'm looking at myself here in the reflection, and I'm imagining I'm cross-grabbing my opposite shoulder, pulling it towards me. Yeah, oh yeah, pull. Yeah, pull. Oh yeah, nice. Pull. Pull. So if you can do that and it feels powerful, I mean, you can even set a, like set a belt up, you know, tie it to something. And you can even like pull it with your body boom, like this, you know. And I used to do like um, that up high, tie the belt up high, wrap your arm around it and pull. And you'll get the sense of, you know, it's just, it's just a different way of training your stability. And then, um, and then when you do your... Uh, you know, your defensive postures and your striking, hey, you might not need to do it because you've been training for years and years, you don't need it. But, but just give it a little try. And it's, it's just a nice little, it's a nice little training exercise. Uh, also, um, uh, practicing uh, pulling is a great way to strengthen the muscles to then practice punching. Yeah, Because you see, give it a go. Practice pulling, just pulling, gripping, pulling in a cross across, like I said, opposites, because then you're using the body, yeah, and then obviously you change legs, and it'll feel weird, and your feet will adjust, let your feet adjust, don't not let them adjust, practice pulling, and then when it comes to pushing, you'll be like, oh yeah, I can see that I'm using my body to strike, uh, and my my core fightingness and movement, yeah, movement, and not, uh, you know, like almost Bruce Lee style, and not, and not, <coughs> you know, where the mechanics are there, but it's different, yeah, different. All right, all right. So condition, uh, yeah. Sorry, geez, I feel sorry for the poor Patreon bastards who are going to watch this video. All he asked me was like, Brett, I'm just starting out. I'm doing some conditioning. I'm trying to build my routine. You know, is there some stuff you can uh, tell me to start working on? And now I've given him the 63 minutes of punishment video, which goes off on every kind of tangent there is. <sighs> oh, well. Sorry about that. But hopefully it's of help. Um... Because uh, I, I, can't, I can't say these are the sort of things I learned as, as these are the sort of things I have learned. I'm not saying they're the greatest or the best, but um, you know, there's just through training and through practice and obviously through being taught, uh, and you know, you just pick up these little things and you can't do them all. Um, sometimes you'll focus on one a lot more, like um, you know, you might have a training session where um, instead of throwing fists, you know, you practice, uh, you know, it's just throwing your palm, you know. So you practice like, oh shit, yeah, guard, hit, 
hit, hit, strike, strike, hit, hit. You know, that might be your training session, you know, where you're like, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try and work on other body weapons, you know, palming people in the sternum, uh, you know, striking them in the neck with this horrible thing, striking him in the face with this, this kind of one, um, getting him a nasty uh, a thumb strike there on the side of the temple. Uh, the same with this one, the throat. Don't, please don't do that to someone's throat if you've trained it. Um, or, or the throat grip, of course. See, that, 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 would, that would end a situation. This simple defensive pos position, uh, you know, simple defensive position. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, the reach, the reach, the grip, the grab the neck with this thumb in there, the cup in and pull. You hug him into you and you're just like, all right, do you want to fight still or do you want to give up now? And with, when someone's got your thumb around their throat, and yeah, it's gonna, they're going to give up, aren't they? Please don't do that, but you might need to do it in your life. Just know that it's something that exists. Don't do it like just willy-nilly. Um, the last time I had to grab someone's throat, and I didn't grab it with this knuckle um, because I wasn't training that knuckle at the time. I just grabbed it normal with the thumb. But the last time I had to grab someone's throat, I used this exact alignment. Um, and it's, the only reason I used it uh, was because I was in the middle of a road. So a, a two lane vehicles going up and down, I think it was like 90 kilometers an hour or whatever the carriageway was, and I ended up having to fight someone in a road. So what did I do? It's funny, I just did this. They were like, come on, come on, like this. Come on, come on, motherfucker, blah, 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 whatever. You know, and you're like, shit, I could get hit from anywhere. And then you're seeing cars. So I used this exact, and it was this exact maneuver. I just went like this. Was that? So I was like, shit, boom. Yeah, and I got him right there on the neck. And of course, because I, like this, I didn't catch any hits, but obviously I was, I, I did it fast, I might have caught a hit, I didn't, because he wasn't hitting yet, but I just went, no pissing around, straight down the line, got his throat like that, boom, good alignment, he's a big guy, and then I literally just, I literally just, you know, with this alignment, I just ran, ran into the side of the curb, and then we both fell over on the floor. And that's what I mean, that's kind of real life, you know, you can do all this, but you, you, you're not going to be fighting someone like we are with all your jabs and blocks. In, you're not going to be doing that in the middle of the road. That's why you've got to have some sense. It's like, shit, I was in a road. It was like some stupid film, boring cars, could have got taken out by a truck. Uh, my thoughts were, this guy's dangerous. He's an idiot because he wants to fight me in the middle of a road. But these trucks are way more dangerous, but I need to get him and me out of the road and I'm not pissing around. So it was like, it was like throat grab time. Boom, throat grab. Run to the, to the pavement. My brain in a split second went, grab his throat and just run. Just run, close your eyes. Doesn't matter if you get hit. Well, I didn't close my eyes, but I'm saying. And just freaking run him that way. And that's what I did. I just ran him that way. We both fell onto the pavement. Then I used some, um, jiu-jitsu wrestling stuff that I've done in a video before um, to subdue him because he fell on top of me um, and yeah did a good jiu-jitsu roll control thing um, and some stuff but uh, I've put the story out there before I'm not going to go over it again but the, the main thing is that was just this same stupid straight down the line one move jab yeah jab but it was the fact that you, you know you practice it in a in, you know in an open way. If I, if I punched him like this, uh, yeah, okay, I don't know, maybe maybe it would have hit him and knocked him back, he would have fallen. Uh, you know, maybe a car would have ridden over him. Maybe as he fell back, he would have got hit by a car. Um, mind you, as I ran back, we could have both got hit by a car, I don't know. But but it just, it just worked out. So that's why uh, it's good for you to train, you know, don't be locked in, sorry, I'm talking too much, but don't be locked in with just, fists um go beyond like just sport and just even if you're uncomfortable um just think okay maybe these are my best weapons maybe i am a boxer and i can throw you know like loads of super cool punches um but then you know go you need to go beyond it yeah because in real life you can't rely on this i'll tell you uh, another story quickly um you know there's a there's a guy who we deal with um who's um 
obviously of the criminal element um, or deal, sorry, I'll say dealt with, dealt with. So I won't give a timeline. But I, I encountered this person and they had an injury. Yeah. So, so as, I'll uh, sorry, they're a boxer as well. So they're quite a well known boxer. So every time we encounter this guy, we're like, oh shit. You know, the, you know, you got to be careful because this guy might start, you know, getting you some horrible hits. Um, certainly a better boxer than I, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing a better boxer than me. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm going to give them the respect, the like enemy respect. Um, you know, I'll at least rate them as equal to, if not better than me. Uh, and then if I get surprised and that's not the case, then I don't get a surprise. But anyway, enemy respect is given someone who actually trained boxing or did. And then anyway, injured. Okay. So foot, uh, lower limb injury, you can't plant yourself. You can't move completely different character, completely different character with the injury, lower limb injury, because psychologically and i know i know they say that like psychologically when people are injured they kind of get more aggressive and you know like an animal backed up into a corner but psychologically this guy knew when we encountered him on this day he's like i can't do shit i'm a boxer i'm about footwork i'm about being planted i'm about throwing my hits i can move i've got a lower limb injury i can't move anymore i can't duck i can't weave i can't generate force off the ground that goes for me and you as well you know, with this sort of stuff. Um, so a completely different character. Um, so there's a story for you, like chalk and cheese, n you know, nice guy, placid, quiet, but you catch him when he's not injured and he's ready to rumble every time, you know? So there's a little, uh, you know, a little like nugget for you of like the way injuries can, can just change people. But that goes for me and you as well, because uh, you know, have you ever thought, I mean, I'm trailing off now, but have you ever thought about what you would do, um, you know, and you don't have to think about it over the top, but have you ever thought about what you do if your arm's broken, um, if, your, if your leg's broken? I know quite a lot of clubs like practice, you know, they'll do like their martial arts in their boots, in their work gear, um, um, you know, I don't know, martial arts on crutches and, you know, it's a, people think it's a bit silly and stuff, but it can be silly, but... But, you know, just make sure you've got a contingency in your mind. You know, what if I, if I am injured, if I can't plant myself? This is why BJJ and wrestling and stuff like that is good. Um, because, it, you know, if you've got an injury uh, to a lower limb or upper limb or something like that, um, you need to have a contingency so that you don't lose. Um, if you want to, like, completely train your martial arts, because technically in real life, we can't, we can't afford to lose once. Um, and it doesn't mean you're not going to, but certainly like when I'm out there, when I'm out there on the, the street, but you know, when I'm out there on the street as a, as a frontline emergency response police, I can't afford to lose. Um, and that, I don't know if there's another venue of life that's more real life or more the streets than that, but I'm sure the message carries the same um, along the, the full uh, smorgasbord or whatever you want to call it of, of real life or whatever is you can't afford to lose. Um, you know, uh, it's not school, it's not schoolyard play, play, bully, whatever. But you, that's the mindset, you know, and people do martial arts for different reasons, but that's a mindset you should have in your, in your mind is like, um, yeah, I can't really afford to lose. And that's why um, in the past I've, I've kind of, I'm pro sparring, but I've also gotten in trouble for being a bit like anti-sparring, but no, I'm not anti-sparring. But there's, there's, a, there's a general gist that like sparring is the be all and end all. And I agree, sparring is awesome. But, uh, but sparring, um, sparring is like more akin to the sport, the sport arena. You know, rolling is then another different thing, you know, where you like BJJ rolling or wrestling practice. I'm talking about like sparring, you know, whatever. Um, so I think do as much sparring as you can. Sparring is very important, but don't um, just remember that like there's, you can never do enough, but just remember, have that focus in your mind. This is the thing. So MMA, Follow me here, follow me into this wormhole I'm going in. So 
I'm a fan of MMA. MMA fighters and sport combatants and stuff like that, they spar, yeah? But then they fight, yeah? They, so they fight and that's as real as it can get for them. Yeah, you know, they do a ring fight, they do a Muay Thai fight, high adrenaline, body goes into fight or flight mode. So they, they, get, they, get, that, they get that understanding. But a lot of people, um, hobby martial artists and stuff like that do like sparring and they with their mates and their friends and at the club and it's all friendly and they never have that real life in fact i need to do a video on this because i finally hit it on the head i finally cracked that nail of how to explain it they never have that real life um experience of the fight or maybe they do whatever but do you know what i'm saying so in those circumstances if you're doing so much of this like friend play play club sparring well one it can train you to fight in a way that's unnatural um, because you'll be sport fighting you know you'll get used to having gear having kit um, bandage wraps uh, big gloves which changes the distancing you won't do um, animalistic actions that you would do in real life like grab hair ears eyes, throats, um, you know, jujitsu is good for that because you get the time to roll with someone and you can think, oh, I'll do this here. I could just freaking fish hook this guy. I just poke him in the eye right now. So, you know, it's, it's silly stuff. And it's, uh, you know, Old Hard to Hurt did a video on it as well. Um, my, my favorite guy, Old Hard to Hurt, he's not really my favorite. I don't dislike him, but um, he's all right. Um, but he, he, came, he came out and attacked the whole Kung Fu community to get views, so he annoyed me a bit. But he's all right, I see Mike, I find him funny. But he did a similar video where he was like, oh, there's death moves in martial arts. A trained fighter will learn those death moves really quickly and be able to do them. But, that, but that's what I'm saying, be that person, yeah? Be that person. I don't know what you guys think of it. Go away, have a comment, have a think. But be that person who spars, who trains his martial arts, but also has the nous to go, okay, I need to respect that the sparring isn't the be all and end all and it isn't real life. Um, and, and a lot of people, like I, I got flamed last time I said this because they were like, oh, but the MMA fighters and this and that and the next thing. And, and yes, the MMA fighters actually go and fight. But there's a large majority of hobby martial artists out there who spar with their mates and this and that. There's nothing wrong with that. Please do as much of that as you can. But then they never actually go and fight or they have like an amateur fight or whatever, which is still, it's still good. It's better than nothing. I hope I'm getting my point across here. Yeah, anyway, I've, ta I've tailed off. I'm mean, going to have a look at the comments, but that's what I'm trying to say. So, be, so, so yeah, I trailed off onto sparring, but that's my opinion of sparring. Um, as as someone, because because he, he, here's the thing for for me and you, for anyone who's watching. So I've I've done martial arts for years. Uh, you know, I'm 35. I've done all sorts of martial arts. I've done martial arts. I started when I was five. I'm 35. I've done karate. I've done muay thai. I've done BJJ. I've done you know a lot of kung fu. Um, I've done jujitsu, BJJ. You know, in various amounts of time. Have I sparred loads and loads and loads and loads? No. Okay, I've done, I've done about the amount of sparring that you would expect I would have done. I've gone to an MMA club uh, for a few months. I've done sparring there. I've done rolling. It, throughout my life, I've, I've, I've been that person we were talking about where I, where I fight my, you know, spar your mates. But I've always had a sense when doing that, that, that it's been like a, an un... An un friendly little itch on the back of my head that hold on a minute this just isn't right it's not real it's not i'm not getting to do what i want to do uh, so use it as a tool for training your techniques and your methods and working on um some of the best sparring you can do is where they just they just say okay you you um you're only allowed to like do this and this or this kick or that kick and or this punch and this punch and we're going to work on our like hook or we're going to work on our distancing we're going to work on so use your sparring to work on stuff like that 
Um, if you're not someone who's actually fighting, hopefully the fighters will agree with me here. I'll have a talk to one of my mates as well who's, um, who used to do competitive Muay Thai. I'll see what he says, but hopefully that they'll agree with me. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. Um, that, you know, be one of those people, um, you know, who knows that it's not real um, or one of the people who actually fights with it um, and gets a better sense of the fear um, the re you know, the rage, the movements, but, but, you know, just don't, what I'm trying to say is don't contract, don't constrain yourself. And yeah, so I have, I've, sorry, I've trailed off, but I have got a lot of flaming in the past by like, I'm guessing it's the hobby, the hobby martial artists or whatever they are. I don't know who the moment I mention anything about be careful with sparring, they go, Oh, you don't spar. You don't do any sparring. Sparring is the ultimate thing. You know, you don't spar, you don't know what real life is, you don't know. Because like I would say, by that definition, and this was the finishing of my point, by that definition, I should have been beaten in all the real life encounters that I had. And I'll look at the comments now, there's some good comments coming up. So that that's what I'm trying to say to you guys. So as someone who hasn't sparred super amounts recently, and over the years, there's probably loads of you out there who've done loads more sparring than me. And I know also you're, you're fighting a, a, a better opponent usually when you're sparring, which is good. But by that merit of you don't know real life and sparring is the ultimate thing, I should have been beaten in all these encounters that I've had because I wasn't trained to do the maneuvers. But it just goes to show that like traditional training real mindset an actual combat experience that is is um is is is, is just as good um if not better uh, i'll say just as good it, it's a it's another path to success yeah um but and it, yeah so it, what am i saying in 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 short do your sparring but know as i'm sure a lot of martial artists do that it's not real um it's as real as you make it and if you're doing sparring and fighting your mates and this and that, um, and you're not actually fighting in an actual ring fight, which I've never done either, um, you won't you won't get that danger. You won't get that thing. Yeah, and then you might not be able to do what you've practiced on the streets. But but actually, does it matter? No, because you'll be better than you would have been. But I'm just I'm just saying, be careful of the pitfall. Because I also have tra tra trained and taught people who, you know, come from more competitive styles of martial arts. And I'm like, okay, we're going to learn this. We're going to learn this lock. We're going to learn this throw. Well, okay, we'll have a little bit of a spa. And, and you know, these, these, these people, have, you know, they're, they're like into the guard and they're like this. And, 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 I, and, I, and I'm just like, mate, that's, that's totally, please never fight someone in real life like that. If someone goes to fight you, I mean, you can fight someone how you want, but if someone goes to fight you or you're fighting and you, you sign, you're both there doing this, like Mortal Kombat style, like, mate, that's, it's a, that is, in my experience, and I promise I'll have a look at the comments now, in my experience, that is more unreal than anything else because it, it just doesn't happen. I know you see on YouTube sometimes, you know, you see like, you know, the guy in the cul-de-sac, that like, little guy, and he's like squared up to this other guy, and they have this little like, thing, and then they wrestle on the floor, and then the other one throws the other one over the back. Um, yeah, so that's an example of like, I guess, like a staged fight. It's a real fight, but it's like a pre-planned stage fight event. Um, I guess it. I guess that is real street self-defense, but those are not the those are not the usual examples of what it actually looks like and is. Um, and the only reason I say it on my channel is, is I've felt and I've been there in real situations, you know, um, it will, as real as I can encounter as a police where people are like attacking you, maybe they're trying to hit you with a weapon or maybe, you, you know, you're just trying to grab someone and they don't want you to grab them. And, you know, people are pushing your face, trying to throw you, you're falling on the floor. It's just chaos. It's just chaos and you can't be in control all the time. Um, but, but little things like the basics um, will help you, uh, you know, be, be better, yeah? Um, and little things as well, like not, you know, don't be the person who, who, who like, 
you know, so you're in you're in a fight or whatever, someone attacks you on the street, or I don't know, and you, you think it's like gonna look like um, an episode of Karate Kid or something. I, I don't know, it's, it's not, you know, and the moment you try and conform uh, an unknown situation to your your mentality of what it's gonna be, you'll, you'll just be put off by it, you know? All you can do is react and take it as it comes. I'm talking way too much, but thanks for, thanks for listening anyway. But all you can do, I'm, I'm sure you guys agree, is just you can only take the situation as it comes. Yeah. So actually, one more thing, and then I'll look at the comments, which is another pitfall of self-defense stuff, is that um, you don't have time to react. The hand is quicker than the eye. So, I mean, there's a lot to be said for, like, preempting uh, danger. And that's another thing. In, in real self-defense, there's a whole category of risk, uh, like risk prevention, um, threat awareness, reading body language and science. And it's not, it's not, it's not science. It's not, well, it is a science, but it's, it's stuff that we're all pre-programmed to do. So you don't need an expert to tell you about it. But sometimes if people have been training in a certain way, a certain martial art or sports or whatever, um, uh, you know, sometimes they just, they, they don't, or sometimes they're not trained. Usually if they're not trained, they don't read these signals. They don't see like the way people are moving, the way they're standing, clenching of fists, tightening of the teeth, flaring of the chest. You know, those are some really obvious ones. People going quiet. Um, you know, they just don't see these things and then they get knocked out or hit or the fight just hits them and they're unaware. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the awesome comments. I'm sure we got this stop me talking crap. And at 86 minutes on, I think I should go soon. What do we got? Uh, oh, we got loads of comments, shit. Okay, Wu Bear two sixty says, um, "Old school martial arts, across cross trained a fair amount, and constantly learning." Yep, they should do. Um, Grim Excuse says, "Lol, must be quite the sight." Uh, I'm gonna have to go now. Uh, Wu Bear, yeah, it's brutal battle, but the first person to win. Uh, learn what your body can do and work on the things your body cannot do yet. We all start somewhere, just need to find the right teachers. Yeah, yeah. No pissing in the serious situation, says Beast the Grim Executioner. Do whatever you need to do because there is no revive in real life here. Um, Wu Bear says, yes, I've had a good fortune of my karate sense of being John Johnson and he helped me understand that spying needs to be more realistic. Yeah, look, thanks, Wu Bear. I'm, I'm, I'm glad... I'm glad people are getting where I'm coming from in that regard. It's a, it's a, it's a touchy subject. Um, need to get back to basics. Similar view here with me, says Beast the Grim Executioner. Spying for me is just a tool to help understand what you have learned in a safe environment. Yes. Um, I respect your knowledge of martial arts as I do Dan the Wolfman, says Wu Bear. Oh, well, to, be, to even be um, mentioned in the same line as Dan the Wolfman is, is, um, is a... Um, uh, is a is a you know is a is a respect. I I I thank you for saying that, but I don't deserve it. But I mean, he's like a proper fighter fighter in the ring. Um, I'm not a ring fighter, but yeah, I, I like Dan as well. Um, his channel and all the stuff. He's like you know real old school, awesome. Um, I know he's a lot of people. Some people don't like him, um, but I do. Um, you know, he's one of those people who's taken the time to learn some old stuff. And he knows that there's some st old stuff out there um, that's pretty powerful stuff. You know, it's, it's not just the current stuff that's good, you know, if you put effort in. Jerbo says, I've found many differences from sparring to real life fights on the street. Yeah, it, it, it should be completely different because it's not street fighter. <laughs> it's street fighter, yeah. Mindset's where it has 100% there from Beast Grim Excuses. Wubear says adrenaline and control management is key. Embrace the chaos, cons of the chaos. And Jobo says practice a few basic kicks, hand strikes, and drill them and drill them. Leave the jumping, spinning kicks alone. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. And, that, you know, that's probably the best thing. And that's why people who do MMA, boxing, whatever, that's why generally they do succeed more. 
or can succeed more or are more effect effective because they just drill their stuff, you know. Uh, while a lot of our traditional martial artists are wasting their time like practicing cutters and this and that, which isn't a waste of time. Um, uh, you, you know, it requires the time to practice it and do the, do the application, you know, whereas, so some of our time, I must say, some of our time is getting wasted. Or, 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 some, or people could say some of our time is getting wasted. But, but, um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's meant to be like, it's meant to pay dividends later, um, you know, because also, um, if you're a sport combat fighter, I'll say this before I go, if you're a sport combat fighter or whatever, you, you, you're, you're only, you've got a limited span where you're, where you're most effective and this and that, the next thing, then don't forget you've got your whole life left over, you know. Um, like, you know, one of my mates I worked with when he was a bit younger, he used to do competitive Muay Thai fights, he trained in Thailand. I'll get him on to have a chat at some point, do some moves, do some martial arts. Um, but now, you know, he's still in his, he's, he's in his early, uh, his, he's just turned 30. And he's a completely different guy um, to how, to who he was back then. You know, his effectiveness at all that stuff has gone down, has gone down. He's still good. Um, and you'll still like, you know, in a real street fight, whatever, you'll still bust someone up, um, you know, but if you compare him to how he was, he's had to change, you know, because he's got older and this and that and the next thing. So, I mean, a lot of people who like poo poo, you know, a lot of a lot of people might come on my channel, which I don't know why, because it's just an old martial art training channel. I'm not professing to be anything great, but a lot of people come on and they'll be flaming it and like, oh, you know, this is crap. This wouldn't work. You stand in horse stance all day. You know, what, what's that going to do? What fight's that going to win? You know, blah, blah, blah. But you're not you're not always going to be 20 something years old. Um, you know, you have to you have to look at the longevity of your martial art. I know uh, one of my old sergeants, great guy, really good fighter, my time, but he wore his hip away. Um, you know, I'm not saying that's just his body, but you know, he was obviously a real good fighter. He drilled those kicks, he practiced them, but he'd worn his hip away. So now he's in his mid forties and he has to be a completely different kind of fighter because he's worn away his hip, he's in pain, da 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 da. da. Um, which is another reason why we practice a lot of the strength, the stretching, the conditioning, the, uh, the qigong, is to try and keep those joints good and et cetera, et cetera. I'm not, just, I'm not saying it wouldn't have changed things for him, but that's just a reason we do it, to try and keep those tendons lengthened and strengthened. Um, um, you probably find that because he was a fighter back in the day doing early Muay Thai here in Australia, um, maybe he wasn't flexible enough. So, you know, like uh, he might have worn away his hips too much because, there's you know, he wasn't quite as flexible as the Taiwanese guys. Who knows? Uh, it does happen to kickboxers, but it happens a lot to Western kickboxers, the hips and also karateka. Um, but I, I think it happens all over the world. So I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not dissing any one martial art. You should see the amount of bust up crooked um, kung fu uh shifus there are out there like in wheelchairs and stuff and same goes for karate we we see a lot of the successful ones who aren't bust um but there's a lot of people out there who bust you know because of their martial art training um you know, i've got my own injuries and stuff from weight training and stuff like that so we all we all it happens to us all so i'm trying to look up to like get the light here but anyway guys look um thanks for supporting the patreon um for those of you who do um, uh, thanks for supporting the channel. Please do like and sub, get the views up there. Um, uh, check out the Iron Body Martial Arts Iron Hand course. It's on the link here if you haven't. Uh, I keep meaning to do a half price sale on it. So I'm gonna do a half price sale. So that's like all the conditioning you need condensed into a, a, like a 40 hour course or whatever it is, however many hours it takes to finish. Um, so that's cool. Uh, I'm gonna be doing another one on the Iron Staff when I get the time. So if any, I know some of the guys are interested in that. So it'll be a similar course. It'll probably be half the price, be cheaper, because I want it, I want more people to be able to give it a go. Um, and, and it'll be the, the, the iron staff training, uh, which is the heavy staff, like for, for training and conditioning. If I was to say there's a, a martial arts weapon of my sister, mind body martial arts or whatever, I would say that's the weapon, but it's not a weapon. It's like a training tool. Because it's like a it's like a ten kilo staff or seven kilo staff that you use 
um, you know, for striking and hitting, but it's for training the tendons and the body. Um, uh, it was also used in antiquity um, for by like Hungwa and stuff like that. It's quite famous. Uh, senseis used to have those things. But anyway, thanks for the comments, guys. Um, appreciate the viewership, uh, and I will uh, I will catch you guys around uh, in the next video. Um, yeah, all the best. Hope everyone's doing well with the COVID. I have to go because I've got to go and see to the little baby who's one years old now. Um, so which is why you barely see me on the channel a lot is because I'm always balancing this baby. But anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for your support. Do like and sub, share the channel. Um, and just enjoy your training uh, and um, yeah, find your own way and just, just enjoy your martial art. Yeah, just do whatever the hell you want. Train it. Have an open mind, uh, and um, yeah, probably tired of the sound of my voice, so I'm gonna and catch you guys later. All right, have a good one. Thanks for the comments and stuff. Beast the Grim Executioner and Jobo 1983. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll catch you around, and whoever else has turned up. Woo bear, awesome. See you guys.